So you might be asking why we just watched all those ski crashes. Um, well, of course, our topic tonight is slope. So we might as well start with the slopes. Um, not only were those were funny crashes, but um, they all went down at various degrees of slope on the um, ski hills. So um, this week, I really want to focus on the concept of slope. What does slope mean? Um, it can mean as in with the ski skiing, the degree as to which the mountain, the steepness. Um, we can look at steepness of uh, roads, of roofs, tops. Um, we're going to be really getting into the concept of slope on our black schedule days. We're going to be outside determining slopes of uh, the woods across the street. So you're going to need to wear uh, some good, uh, good clothes this week. Uh, we'll do that Thursday, Friday. But also uh, slopes are graphical where we can apply them to our slope intercept form um, and determine positive and negative slopes. And slopes are also rates. We call slope the rate of change. Um, so slope is also um, the rate something occurs, the miles per hour, that's a slope. Or if you get a $15 allowance a week and you, you uh, save it up, $15 a week is a slope, or a slope, yeah, it's a rate, it's cumulative. So slope has many different aspects and many different ways. And one of the things we really need to understand is um, what the concept means. What does that mean? Slope of a line is a constant rate. It's rising and running at the same rate, um, as in with the allowance and the miles per hour and distance over time and things like that. So we're just going to review some basics tonight so that when you come into class tomorrow, you'll be ready to go with our slope activity. So let's look over at these lines over here. Um, if you remember from last year, you, did, you read a graph from left to right, just as if you read a book. So to determine um, what type of slope it is, you have to read it from left to right. So if we start on this side and read this way, and we look at this tan line first, starting at the left and I follow it to the right, it's decreasing. So that should be a negative slope. Starting from left to right, if I look at the red line, that is going up, so that would be a positive slope. Now the two that we don't talk about very often, if you look at this blue line from left to right, that's rising zero, but running a whole lot. So that is a zero slope. So horizontal lines have a slope. Remember we use the letter M for slope. This is zero. And then we know from our um, functions work already that a vertical line will not pass the vertical line test. Therefore, it's not a function. So therefore, it can't have a slope. So we say the slope is undefined. We put a zero with a line through it. So vertical lines, although they're a line, they're not a function. Therefore, they have no slope. Horizontal lines do rise. They don't rise, but they run. Um, and it is a function. It passes the vertical line test, a horizontal line is, so therefore has a slope of zero. Okay, so hopefully that's a good review on that. Um, remember when we're calculating slope, we look at the vertical rise, and sometimes it's not a rise. I don't like that word because sometimes it's a fall if it's negative. So we really look at the rise or fall. I like to put fall in here because on a negative slope it's going down right each time not up um, and over the vertical run which is the horizontal distance okay and that is a ratio so again I didn't mention that earlier but slopes are ratios okay lots of things about that slope um, so if we look at this here um, in this case, the C is the uh, y-intercept, right? The y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. Um, so you can tell if I'm going to increase the line, if I increase the slope, what happens to it? Write me a little sentence about that in your notes. What happens when you increase a line? And then the same thing, what happens when you decrease a line? So there's the zero, and if I keep going down, there's negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Okay, so this is actually decreasing, right? So I want to know two questions. What happens when you um, decrease it negatively? See, this is decreasing it. Negative 13 is smaller than negative 12. Negative 14 is smaller than negative 12 or 13 and so on. So when I keep decreasing it and the negative, what happens? Then, 
Let's go all the way back. I don't know if I can make this go. Let's go all the way back. Now, what happens when I increase a positive slope? Okay. And then this is your uh, y intercept. So it's just moving it up and down the y. So when I move it up and down the y, here's your third question. When I move it up and the, down in the y, does the steepness of the slope change? So three questions. So what happened to a positive slope when it increased? What happens to the negative slope when it decreases? And what happens to the slope when the y-intercept is changed? Now the great thing about a video is if I went too fast, you can pause this, go back, and watch what happened when we increased and decreased in the slope. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so I want you to write a couple answers to those questions, okay? Now again, just for review, um, what kind of slope is this? Left to right, you should know. Then, um, just to review how you find slope, we have two coordinates here. We have negative 5 and 2. And then here we have 1 and negative 6. Um, so we can do this two ways. We can do it mathematically, or we can do the ratio. Um, the ratio is easy, um, because again, this we should know this is a negative slope. So I can see, draw a line from point to point, okay? And then I can say, it doesn't rise in this case, it falls, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It falls eight units. And then the horizontal run is one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we can reduce that to four over three. Now you don't necessarily have to do it between those two points. I could have find I could have found two points closer. If I looked, I could have just went here to here because that's a good point on the line. And that would have been down four over three. And because it's down, we need our negative in there. Now the other way to do it is to do um, y2 minus y1 because that's your y is your up and down. And remember it's the uh, rise or fall over the horizontal. So we do uh, x2 minus x1, that's your horizontal run. So we'll just very simply plug those in. So this is x1, y1, and I made those one because they came first. Um, and then this would be your x2 and your y2. So then we just plug them in. y2 should be negative six minus y1, which is two. And then, x2, which is 1, minus um, x1, which is negative 1. Okay, and then again, um, with our negatives, we like to change it, change it. So that becomes negative 8 over, change it, change it, 6, which is exactly what we have over here. And again, that reduces down to negative 4 thirds. Now, I always have students ask me, what happens if... Um, I didn't make this, what if I had these switched? What if I happen to call these, this one, x1, y1, and this one, x2, y2. So let's say I got these in a different order than I had here, so let's check that out. So again, it's still y2 minus y1, so that would be two minus y1, which is negative six, over x2, which is negative five, my, oops, minus, excuse me, x1, which is one, okay? So we change it, change it, and that gives me eight, and then I change it, change it, which that gives me negative six, because if any one of these is negative, the whole thing comes negative, so we can just neg say that's negative eight over six. So if I look at this answer and this answer, did it matter? which way I labeled x1, y1, or x2, y2? You tell me. Have a great night. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll be ready to talk about and calculate slope.